During the last couple of years, Dutch politicians have made quite a name for themselves in Eastern European countries. Frans Timmermans has done nothing else than try to force Poland and Hungary into accepting multiculturalism. And Dutch Europarliamentarians Sophie Obertveld and Judith Sargentini are also quite obsessed with the Polish and the Hungarian people. However, do these Dutch politicians really have the right to lecture the Poles and the Hungarians on how to behave? Let's find out in this video. Here are 5 things that Eastern Europeans must know about the Netherlands. 1. The Dutch government sponsors terrorism. People like Judith Sargentini are always talking about so-called human rights. Hungary is endangering human rights, she claims. In reality, however, Dutch politicians should do some introspection if it comes to human rights. The Dutch Minister for Foreign Trade and Development Cooperation has her personal life deeply entangled with a Palestinian terrorist movement. Here we have her with Yasser Arafat, also known as the father of modern terrorism, and her Palestinian husband who used to serve in Arafat's cabinet, probably involved with quite some terror attacks in Israel. Now imagine what would happen if the Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs would be married to some foreign terrorist movement. Don't you think that the Dutch politicians would complain about that? The Dutch establishment has been sponsoring terrorist organizations for many years, which recently led to the murder of a 17-year-old Jewish girl. Her father and brother got severely wounded. In a in addition to that, the corrupt Dutch establishment has also funded terrorist organizations in Syria. So the idea that it is appropriate for Dutch politicians to open their mouth about Hungary and Poland is truly ridiculous. 2. The Netherlands has a long history of corrupt and violent measures against the opposition. People like Sophie Obertveld are really good friends with the opposition in Hungary. She claims to represent democratic values and European values, etc. Now a real democratic government distinguishes itself from third world governments by how they treat their opposition. Now the state ideology in the Netherlands is multiculturalism. And let's take a look at some recent Dutch history in the area of how the Dutch establishment treated opposition leaders that dared to go against multiculturalism. The first politician who dared to go against multiculturalism in the Netherlands was a man named Hans Janmaat. He became the victim of multiple assassination attempts and terrorist attacks. One of these terror attacks led to his wife ending up in a wheelchair. Back in 2002, there was another politician who dared to oppose the ideology of multiculturalism. The entire media establishment and the political establishment increasingly started dehumanizing this politician. It was almost as if they hoped that he would die or something like that. At some point, some former communist who had been an open supporter of Mao Zedong and Pol Pot said this about the man in question. Ik denk dat uh, voor Tuinzen. Ik hoop dat. dat het. A few days after this, a professional shooter with ties to this same former communist party executed the politician in question. And immediately after that, a certain member from the former communist party just in time warned his friends in the party to remove all evidence of ties with this shooter. And earlier in the year 2020, 17 years after this murder, this man was given an award for his deeds. The other communist is now in charge of the institute responsible for safeguarding the quality of the education system in the Netherlands. And also interesting is that today the murderer is walking around freely again. So that was the second politician who dared to go against the ideology of multiculturalism. A more recent example is Geert Wilders, who has been the main opposition leader in the country for over a decade now. In this case the Dutch establishment has worked closely together with corrupt elements within the legal system in order to get Geert Wilders prosecuted in a political trial. From beginning to end the process was corrupt. They initiated the process with pre-printed police forms and all they needed to do was collect some signatures from some random people on the streets to start the trial. During these trials we've basically seen everything. Corrupt politicians trying to influence key witnesses, biased judges who already expressed their opinion in TV shows before the trial even started. Stom verbaasd naar kijkers dat ze ook 
met kennis, zonder enige kennis van zaken, uh, meegaan naar de onderbuikgevoelens. En dan allerlei ideeën hebben en dan ook wetgeving produceren. En ik denk van ja, waar gaat het over? Wat is nou eigenlijk het probleem om het oplossen? Waar denkt u dan aan? Uh, bijvoorbeeld het wetvoorstel van de minimumstraffen. En een final verdict that sends chills down your spine. 3. The Netherlands is becoming increasingly unsafe for women. People like Judith Sargentini often accuse Hungary of being a place that somehow endangers women's rights. In reality, Hungary is a better place for women than the Netherlands. For example, in the Dutch capital Amsterdam, 81% of women between 18 and 34 experience street harassment. This is the direct result of multiculturalism because I don't even need to tell you exactly which people that are present in the Netherlands are turning the country into a less safe place for women. In Rotterdam, 94% of women between 18 and 45 experience street intimidation. In 2018, a Dutch girl got raped by a non-Western migrant in a bus. The perpetrator got only 20 days in prison. 20 days, people. Because he is from, quote, another culture, according to the judge. So if someone from another culture traumatizes a Dutch girl for the rest of her life, he gets 20 days in prison. In the Netherlands. Of course, if this were to ever happen in Hungary, these Dutch politicians would be very worried about the situation of women in Hungary. 4. The Netherlands is not a democracy. When trying to undermine the Polish and the Hungarian people, politicians like Frans Timmermans are always talking about things like democratic values and European values, etc. They accuse Poland and Hungary of somehow undermining democracy. In reality, the Netherlands itself has undermined democratic values for all over a decade now because most things that are happening to the Dutch people in their own country are not the result of a legitimate democratic process. In 2005 the Dutch voted against the European Constitution. The Dutch establishment ignored the results of this referendum and approved the European Constitution anyway. In 2016 the Dutch voted against the Ukraine European Union Association Agreement. Again the corrupt Dutch establishment ignored the results. After that they fully abolished the referendum itself. So no more referendums for the Dutch people because the Dutch people didn't vote in the way that the establishment wanted to see. This means that the Netherlands is the second country in Europe to ever abolish their own referendum. The first country in Europe that ever did this was the communist East German Democratic Republic. So that should tell you something. Also the way in which they abolished the referendum was actually illegal, but they did it anyway. But also apart from this, the Netherlands Netherlands is not a democracy. In article 94 of the Dutch constitutional law it says that international law supersedes national law. This basically means that the Dutch are not a sovereign people. Which means that the Netherlands is not a real democracy. Because the purpose of a democracy is so that the people can be sovereign. And to make it even worse this article 94 is actually illegitimate in itself. Because the Dutch people voted against it. And yes also the implementation of multiculturalism has not been the result of any legitimate democratic process. It was enforced by the same people whom before the fall of the Iron Curtain were in favor of communism and whom today are attacking Poland and Hungary. 5. There is no academic freedom in the Netherlands. Frans Timmermans is very concerned about the so-called academic freedom in Hungary. In reality there is more academic freedom in Hungary than there is in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands all the universities have been completely taken over by extreme left-wing activists. If you are a Dutch academic and you want to do a research that goes against the ideology of multiculturalism, you can forget it. They will not allow you to do it and they will do everything to kick you out of the university. In the Netherlands there are only a few true academics left who are critical towards multiculturalism, but they are all about to retire and they too have to really really watch out what they say because they are under constant observation. So no, the idea that Frans Timmermans has the right to open his mouth about academic freedom is completely ridiculous. So these are five things that Eastern Europeans must know about the Netherlands. So the next time that some politician from the Netherlands talks about Eastern European countries, you know what to do. Laugh in their face very very loudly.